Hi, my name is Tara Cordy Simpson and welcome to the Biology 12 video on carbohydrates and lipids. So some key ideas that you want to think about while you're watching this whole video. I'm just going to grab my pen here. The first thing that you want to think about is how do humans make energy? So where does it all come from? So remember that we were talking a little bit about the mitochondria before and that helps create ATP, but where does the mitochondria get the reactants it needs to cr produce its energy? The next thing we want to think about is how do humans actually store energy? So when we have extra energy that we're not using, where and how does it get stored? A little bit of vocabulary to go over before we get started, um, just to, so you can follow along in the video. Glucose is a monomer of a carbohydrate, so a building block. A monosaccharide is a single sugar, so mono means one, saccharide means sugar. Next we have a polysaccharide, poly meaning many, saccharide sugars, many sugars. And a lipid is nonpolar molecules that do not mix well with water. Remember that characteristic about lipids. Phospholipids are found in the cell membrane of all cells. And finally, steroids, which are hormones. An example of a steroid would be testosterone. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to begin with one of the major biomolecules. So there's four types of biomolecules in the human body that are very important. We're going to talk about the carbohydrate today as one of the important biomolecules. So the first point you want to note about it is that its monomer is glucose and another name for that would be monosaccharide, a single sugar. So carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So those are the elements and its empirical formula is CH2O. That means that it always has a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. Now when you're looking at a page of a whole bunch of different molecules, how do you know what a carbohydrate is? So I have an eyeball hint for you. What you want to do is you want to look for this skeleton here that I'm outlining in red. And whenever you see that outline there, that will tell you that you are looking at a carbohydrate. So always look for this structure here to find those carbohydrates. Okay, so now we're going to talk about monosaccharides. So with monosaccharides, the main function is to create energy. And again, we have single sugars. And right down here is a monosaccharide. This one is called glucose. Now I'm going to draw your eye over here to all the different examples that we have of different monosaccharides. We've got glucose, fructose, galactose, ribose, and ose. So first of all, let's recognize they all end in O-S-E. Okay, and they're all sugars. Now these three here are all isomers of one another. That means that they all have the same um, elements within them. They're just arranged in a different order. And there's two more monomers here that we want to talk about. So ribose is the monosaccharide found in, D in RNA. And deoxyribose is found in DNA. So remember you talk about the sugar phosphate backbone. Deoxyribose is the sugar that's in the sugar phosphate backbone. And one more quick thing about carbohydrates. Remember we were talking about in the beginning about one of our key ideas that we wanted to think about. Where do humans get all that sugar that they need for the mitochondria in order to create ATP? Well, that comes from all the monosaccharides in the body. And the monosaccharides come from polysaccharides, which we're going to go into in a minute. So the next thing we're going to talk about is disaccharides. So di means two, and then of course we've got saccharide again for sugar, so two sugars. A monosaccharide 
plus a monosaccharide equals a disaccharide, two sugars. So some examples of disaccharides are maltose, sucrose, which is table sugar, and lactose, a milk sugar. Okay, on to polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are a complex molecule. They are actually chains of glucose molecules linked together. And there's three main examples that you need to be able to know and recognize. The first one is starch. Starch is found in plants and its function is energy storage for the plant. Um, if you look at the characteristic of starch when you're looking at it in diagrams here, it's always going to be straight or linear chains, chains that spiral forming a helix or sometimes branching. So this would be the branching here that we'd be referring to. The next molecule that you want to, or complex um, molecule that you want to know about is glycogen. Glycogen is found in mammals, in the liver, and in the muscles and its function is energy storage as well. And when you're looking to recognize it in a diagram, it is highly branched. So you can see here's one chain, there's another chain, and another chain, another chain of glucose, and another chain of glucose. So that is a highly branched molecule. And finally, cellulose is found in plants in the cell wall. And its function is not energy storage, but it is a structural component. So it helps support that cell wall and make it strong for the plant to be able to stand upright. Its characteristic, if you're looking for it, is a linear or straight sequence of glucose molecules with no branching. And the other quick fact about this is that humans cannot digest cellulose. It is used as a dietary fiber in facilitating digestion in the colon area. So that brings us to the end of carbohydrates, and now we're going to move on to our second biomolecule called lipids. Now lipids are something that many, many people like to eat because they taste so good. Carbohydrates taste pretty good too. Now you may want to ask, what is the main difference between the function of the sugar and the lipids? Well, sugar is the main energy source for... Um, for quick energy for humans. However, lipids is the second main energy source for energy for humans. Let's talk a little bit more about it. So lipids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygens. Um, lipids actually have more than one function. They have energy storage, um, and when it's broken down, then it's used for energy. Cushioning and protection, so fatty tissue or adipose tissue, and it actually um, protects around the organs, so the organs don't get bruised, as well as insulation of the body. So lipids are nonpolar. That means they do not mix well with water. So they are hydrophobic, so water phobic, repelled by water or afraid of water. Some examples of lipids are fatty acids, neutral acids, oils, steroids, and waxes. So now we're gonna move into three different types that we're gonna learn about today. The first one is triglyceride, which is neutral fats, oils and fats. The second one is phospholipids, which is found in the cell membrane of all cells. And thirdly, steroids, which are hormones and cholesterol. Okay, let's begin with triglycerides. Triglyceride is not a polymer. So lipids don't have monomers or polymers within that biomolecule group. That's what makes it a little bit different than the other three that we're gonna be learning about. Triglyceride can be saturated or can be unsaturated. Well, what exactly does that mean? When it's saturated, that just means that it has single bonds between all the carbon atoms. When it's unsaturated, then you're gonna start finding those double bonds between the carbon atoms. Now, how do we figure out whether it's saturated or unsaturated? One thing you can do here, this is a fatty acid, and we're gonna look here and we can see there's a double bond. So that means that it's unsaturated. This one here, this fatty acid, there is no double bonding between carbons, so we know that one is saturated. 
Okay, so what have we got down here in the diagram? The X here refers to glycerol. So there's a glycerol. And then we have three fatty acids. One, two, three. And you can see if you look at this outline here, I'm just going to change the color of my pen, that here we've got the upright part of an E, and there's the top other three lines of an E. So when you're looking for a triglyceride, this is the form that you want to look for. So if we add a glycerol plus three fatty acids together, and then it goes through dehydration synthesis, what do we end up with? Then you end up with a triglyceride as well as three waters. So triglyceride plus water. So let's move on to comparing saturated fats and unsaturated fats. This is an important item that you're going to have to know for your standards. So let's spend a little bit of time on it. Saturated fats only have single bonds. Okay. Unsaturated fats have at least one double bond between the carbons. With the saturated fats, the maximum number of hydrogen atoms are present because there are only single bonds. However, in unsaturated fats, there are fewer hydrogen atoms due to the double bonding that's occurring there. Next, when you're looking at saturated fats, all saturated fats are solid at room temperature, whereas unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature, such as olive oil. An example of a saturated fat that's solid at room temperature is butter. And where do saturated fats come from? Well, they come from meat or animal sources. Unsaturated fats all come from vegetable or plant sources. Now we're going to move on to phospholipid. The phospholipid is made up of two fatty acids, one glycerol, and one phosphate head. So if we take a look at this here, here is the phosphate head centered around the phosphate. And then we've got two fatty acid, here's the glycerol here. And then we have two fatty acid tails. Here's one fatty acid tail. And it looks like it is saturated because there is no double bonding. And down here we have a double bond in this fatty acid. And what that leads to, it actually leads to this little kink in the tail here. So what we have here is the same molecules down here. We've got the phosphophate head. And down here we have a fatty acid that's saturated. And here is the unsaturated fatty acid that lends to the kink here due to the double bond. Now, the phospholipid is the main component of cell membrane in all cells. And you can see that the head is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means that it likes water in this area right here. However, inside of the cell membrane, it has a hydrophobic tails. So all in here, this area in here does not like water or will repel water. Um, and you can remember we were talking about how phospholipids are polar. So it's positive on the outside of the cell membrane and negative on the inside of the cell membrane. So this here would be the inside of a cell, and this would be the outside of the cell. And this cell membrane would actually continue all the way around. Okay, so that would actually, sorry, form a full cell there. Okay, on to our last lipid we're going to talk about today. Um, is the steroid and its function is to act as a hormone. So an example is testosterone which is found in the testes and the testicles. Another example is cholesterol which we're going to talk more about later. So how do you recognize what a steroid looks like? The thing that you want to do is you want to be able to look for the four ring structure here all joined together. So two and then two all joined together and that will tell you that you are looking at a steroid.